one. Um, I guess you can see my slides. Yeah, you can. So um, I'm going to talk to you uh, today about contemporary opera and um, experimental music theatre. I have a couple of examples. My colleagues are here to present uh, their ideas on that. But in general, I just wanted to, to make a bit of a small introduction. So um, my name is Katarina Nyberg. Um, I come from Finland, Helsinki. And um, I have a, a master's in science and engineering, but I'm finishing up a master's in arts management at the moment. So what I see is many people come to me and say, oh, you're doing something very different. Um, but I think that especially you guys here um, agree that um, music and technology belong together. And so also in terms of what contemporary classical music and where that is going should um, and look at the digital age. So um, I mainly work uh, at the moment with uh, the Sibelius 150th anniversary, which is in 2015, so next year. And the idea there is to take the Finnish national composer Jean Sibelius um, as something that is relevant for kids today and new audiences today. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on, but first I just want to give you a brief introduction where we are at, at the moment, in terms of my opinion. So, um, um, classical music has entered the digital age. We saw it today with the LSO play that was, that was presented, a very interesting project where you can see the inner workings of an orchestra. It's actually very funny to, see, uh, to hear that from Chris, that um, Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique is going to be presented there, because that's also featured in the iPad application called the Orchestra by the Philharmonia Orchestra. And um, so it'll be fun to see, fun to compare those two um, later on once that is released. Um, there are many, many uh, examples of um, audiences being able to see, get into the inner workings of an orchestra. Um, there are immersive installations for that. But today, actually, what I would want to talk about is um, how contemporary opera and experimental music theater are presented in this new, new technology media. So um, Omnivore um, is an opera that was actually composed for the mobile phone. And my colleague Jakko Nosian is going to tell you a little bit more about it. He's the director of that opera, and the composer of that opera, Mika Hytiänen, has also composed uh, the opera called Aikainen, which is an opera about time. It featured 3D video. It featured 3D, inst 3D printed instruments that are not uh, traditional instruments, but completely new instruments. And uh, we performed this opera this week beginning of this week on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at the Grindborn Festival in the Art Colour Theatre. So next I would ask uh, Mika to come here and just talk about Aikain and where that is coming from. Mika, please. Thanks. I, um, I love the concept of being an opera composer. It makes you think of Wagner and Stockhausen and all that. And this is what opera composers look like nowadays. It's a bit boring. Um, to say something of my background, I, I did study in, in Berlin at the University UDK, University of Künste, University of Arts, those dots. But I also, in my uh, wild youth, um, did master's, master's degree on math. And for me, always as a composer, it's important to have some kind of uh, really solid concept before I start with a piece. And with Aikain, and the concept was obviously time. It's a piece about time. It's like a love letter to time. Yes, thank you. I thought I'd say hello. Um, oh, I'm, I can, oh, I'm hearing something new. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and also in Michaela. Michaela. Sorry? Michaela. Michaela. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> they wanted to... Uh, talk about my, my PhD. Sorry. Um, um, with Aikainen, it, the concept is time. And as uh, um, Katarina mentioned, we, we used many different aspects 
of time and different dimensions to reach the fourth dimension. So that for that reason, we had to use old and new technologies, for example, 3D videos. And uh, one of the new concepts we used was 3D printing. Um, my um, abstraction of time was actually two motives. The first motive is pendulum movement, because pendulum is obviously something you can see, it's something really physical, but at the same time it's a metaphor for time. And there's something you can see in the final version of the ocarina. This is the actual version we used until Wednesday. The 3D printing was done in the form of pendulum moving in time. And the second uh, motive are the prime numbers, because for me, for reasons you have to ask my shrink, uh, prime numbers represent um, time, because prime numbers, you need to know all of them because you can get the second one. And for that reason, the proportions of, of this instrument are planned according to prime numbers. And for me, it was really important when designing this that I would ha first have the idea, the concept, the drawing, and only when it's printed, we are going to see or hear, hopefully, if it makes any sound. Usually, as a composer, you start with the sound, then you compose it, and then you have a performance. In this case, we had the concept, we drew it, we printed it, and when it was printed, like two weeks, three weeks before the actual premiere, we started to start with filing and making it actually sound. And I gave this talk yesterday uh, in Imperial College, and I tried to play it there, and it worked fine uh, when I do it, did it home, but it didn't work that well yesterday, so this time I'm not even going to try. We are just going to do it uh, with the laptop. Just a little teaser to make you order Icon for your own festival next year. Um, my idea was to make the pendulum movement audible in the, in the use of this instrument, but at the same time, it's really important that it's not only the concept. I also have my players, the instrumentalists, who find their own ways of using this, uh, these instruments. The other things that are also uh, to mention some of the, of the aspects of time and new te technology is, was the frequency analysis that we used. This is obviously something that has been used a lot in, in new music and especially in German, new music theater, but in this time it was used with a whole uh, big um, group of musicians uh, playing the four months of the voiceover we used. I think that's um, enough about Eikainen and then about our other projects. So next, um, Jaakko is going to talk about um, the other two opera projects, one that is coming up in October in Glyndebourn, and the other one um, that they did, uh, Mika and Jaakko did previously. So hello everybody, my name is Jaakko Nousian. Mm, I'm briefly going to talk about these two examples now, and um, I'm also finishing my PhD on the topic of mobile media and uh, opera, so hopefully I should know something about these things. I'm not sure myself yet. Uh, well, mobile, uh, mobile media, of course, uh, in principle, frees opera to be uh, free of uh, time and, and, and uh, place. It can be experienced whenever and wherever users want to. And it can be uh, location-specific, too, so we're not stuck with uh, um, opera houses or opera festivals anymore. But paradoxically, this first example, uh, you are here, actually is going to be presented in an opera house. Um, you Are Here will be premiered in the Kleinborn Opera in the end of October, and it coincides with the start of a research project between Kleinborn and the University of Sussex, and this is called Opera and the Media of the Future. So check it out if, if that's something you might be interested in. And the idea of the work is um, uh, to create an abstraction of the Opera House, so to say, by connecting um, interior spaces in the Glyndebourne Opera House uh, 
uh, with uh, uh, or two exterior spaces outside the three opera houses in Berlin, the Staatsoper, the Deutsche Oper, and the Komische Oper. So in Gleinborn, you are here will be encountered in form of uh, six visual artworks that will be hanging on the walls of the opera house, um, in the lobby, and other spaces that are not uh, uh, conventionally considered as performance spaces, like, for example, the laboratories. Um, these visual artworks, they all include um, QR codes, or a QR code in each of them. And then when you activate them with your um, smartphone camera, it will connect to a short video that has been filmed in Berlin. Uh, and these videos then, in turn, they deal with the uh, specific locations where they were filmed and the, the histories of the three opera houses. So basically, we approach these prestigious opera houses as sort of parasites. In Gleinborn, we are uh, sort of invading, invading the space without really interfering with the opera house program. And the idea is that visitors might stumble on these works and discover them by accident and hopefully then be surprised by them. Um, and I also love the fact that in Berlin, when we are filming our videos in the next few weeks or so, uh, our musicians will actually be street musicians playing on the doorsteps of these opera houses and we'll see how that goes. Um, what Jakob means is that we actually have professional players, but we won't have commission. We won't get allowance to get inside the opera houses. Yeah. <laughs> so these videos that we are making um, and have made, they um, they are quite short, um, from one to a couple of minutes in length, really. Um, now, in you are here, we will only have uh, two performers, a baritone and a violinist. Yep. And this kind of compact, let's say like a digital chamber uh, opera approach, that was something that we learned from our previous project, Omnivore. And Omnivore uh, uh, was released in uh, 2012, I think it was, yes. And it was uh, available as free of charge uh, applications for iOS and Android operating systems. Um, the work was produced together with the Finnish National Opera. And the um, subject matter was, as the name suggests, it was food and eating. And this consisted of uh, short music videos. And in those videos, then you as users would uh, encounter our mischievous and mysterious main character called O, who was very passionate, passionate about her diet. And the topic was also reflected on the uh, user interface. So, uh, we used the idea of these plates, and um, they were used as uh, hotspots for entering uh, content. When you first opened the app, uh, only this first plate was available, and then more plates became available and visible over the course of one week. This work was time-specific. This meant that there were different versions of content, and depending on the time of day, you would get different bits and pieces. For example, um, uh, when you first met O, you would interrupt her breakfast or her lunch or her dinner, or if you um, went to the app uh, at night, she would be rummaging through the fridge. So these apps, unfortunately, are no longer available, but you can go online. Uh, we have an alternative version at omnivoretheopera.net. You can check it out there. I think we might still have a few minutes to check out one yep. episode. Sure. So... I'm having pinnip 
Can I, can I just say that that was Esse Lutin and our wonderful mezzo-soprano there. Okay. So what's next? Um, in terms of um, what we're doing in Helsinki for classical music and the digital age, uh, we're organizing a Sibelius-inspired hackathon um, in October 17th to 19th. And the idea there is that, in a way, Sibelius was a hacker himself in his time with his piano. He, as a schoolboy, he I don't know if you know this, but um, in the winter, the Finnish bodies of water freeze. So um, during Easter, Sibelius was walking on ice, and um, he, his shoes weren't that great, so the wetness of the melting ice went into his shoes, and he yelled in, in very enthusiastically, saying that how wonderful it is to feel um, the wetness of melting shackles. And then he went straight home to improvise a piece on that. So um, with that as an inspiration, we are organizing SIPAC and um, the application for SIPAC is actually ending tomorrow. So if you're interested in uh, working with classical music and what technology can do, um, sign in there or there. And this is the QR code for the URL, but it's cpac.fi for anyone else. So. Thank you very much, and thank you, Andrew. Katarina, thank you so much for coming along. Yeah. Thank you.